Ron Paul has dropped a noteworthy truth bomb about extraordinary advice Robert Mueller, blaming him for hindering and concealing a 9-11 test into Saudi Arabia's part in the assaults. As indicated by the previous congressman, Mueller, on the requests of President George W. Shrub, conspired with the Saudis to conceal their part in coordinating the Sept-11 assaults. Ron Paul Institute.org reports, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia had considerable contribution in the 9-11 assaults. The crusade to uncover the redacted bits of the Joint Congressional Inquiry into intelligence community activities before and after the terrorist attacks of September 11 was mostly fruitful, in spite of the fact that there is still much the administration is keeping from the American individuals. What we gained from the pages that were uncovered is that Saudi government representatives helped and coordinated no less than two of their robbers, and that Prince Bundar al-Sultan, at that point Saudi diplomat to the United States, was at the focal point of the bug-catching network that entrapped the country on September 11. Presently a claim brought by a portion of the 9-11 families uncovers that, an entire two years previously 9-11. The Saudi government supported a dry run intended to test aircraft security. As Paul Sperry reports in the New York Post. Two years previously the carrier assaults, the Saudi embassy paid for two Saudi nationals, living covert in the U.S.'s understudies, to fly from Phoenix to Washington in a dry keep running for the 9-11 assaults, claims the revised grievance recorded in the interest of the groups of somewhere in the range of 1,400 casualties who kicked the bucket in the fear-based oppressor assaults 16 years back. The claim blames the Saudis for giving both money-related and operational help to the operation, which was unmistakably a clandestine activity by Saudi Insight. Legal advisors for the complainants charge that the two understudies, Mohammed al in and Hamdan al shalai were a piece of the kingdom's system of operators in the U.S. The confirmation marshaled by the claim is entirely noteworthy. It demonstrates that these understudies prepared at an al-Qaeda camp in the meantime as a portion of the ruffians. They had general contact with an exceedingly set Saudi pioneer of al-Qaeda who is presently detained at Gitmo. Both were Saudi government workers and were in customary contact with the Saudi international safe haven. It was November, 1999, when Qayyin and Hamdan loaded up an Air West flight to Washington, D.C., and began acting in a very suspicious way. A synopsis of the FBI records on them states. After they loaded onto the plane in Phoenix, they started asking the flight chaperon specialized inquiries concerning the flight that the flight orderlies discovered suspicious. At the point when the plane was in flight, al and asked where the restroom was, one of the flight chaperons directed him toward the back of the plane. All things considered, al and went to the front of the plane and endeavored on two events to enter the cockpit. The response of the pilots was obviously Islamophobic, they did a crisis arrival in Ohio, where the team was captured, cuffed, and taken in for a dressing. Fortunately for the Saudi plotters, the FBI chose their conduct was no major ordeal and let them go. It was just later that our Keystone cops found that a suspect in a counterterrorism examination in Phoenix was driving Shalai's auto and this understudy had prepared as psychological oppressor camps in Afghanistan and had gotten explosives preparing to perform assaults on American focuses. As for Kayin, the FBI closed he was a Saudi knowledge specialist in view of his success of contact with Saudi authorities. Move along, people, nothing to see here. I expounded on the association between the Saudi government and the exercises of a portion of the robbers in San Diego, which was uncovered when the 28 pages of the redacted joint inquiry report were incompletely unredacted. We wouldn't know anything about this piece of the 9-11 plot if Robert Mueller, then FBI chief. Now the extraordinary direction heading up the Russia door test, had his direction. At the point when the joint inquiry sent previous FBI legal counselor and counterterrorism master Michael Jacobson to San Diego to explore Saudi connects to 9-11, Mueller was irate, as Andrew Coburn reports in Harper's. Sway Graham, the previous administrator of the Senate Intelligence Committee, let me know as of late that Robert Mueller, at that point the FBI executive, 
and now the uncommon guidance examining associations amongst Russia and the Trump crusade, made the most grounded complaints to Jacobson and his partners going to San Diego. Graham and his group opposed Mueller's endeavors, and Jacobson flew west. There he found that his hunch was right. The FBI documents in California were loaded with remarkable and condemning points of interest. Jacobson's San Diego visit uncovered much confirmation of FBI inadequacy, including the way that two of the thieves, Nawaf al-Hazmi and Khalid al majer who had touched base in California from Malaysia and been taken under the wing of Saudi specialists, had been close with a FBI source, Abdesatr Sheikh, as Coburn advises us. Hazmi had really lived in his home after Majer left town. Sheikh neglected to say his young Saudi companion's last names and consistent report to his FBI case officer, or that they were taking flying lessons. Naturally, the examiners had a ton of inquiries for this man. All things considered, Mueller resolutely denied their requests to talk with him, notwithstanding when sponsored by a congressional subpoena, and evacuated Sheikh to an undisclosed area for his own particular well-being. Today. Graham trusts that Mueller was acting under request from the White House. Consider this for a minute, the man now responsible for researching the President of these United States for arrangement with Russia and conceivable deterrent of equity himself impeded a congressional examination concerning the 9-11 psychological oppressor assaults. Was Mueller, conceivably on orders from President George W. Shrub, conspiring with the Saudis to conceal their part? The Bush Organization with its familial connections to the Saudis, had each enthusiasm for concealing Riyadh's dynamic complicity. Beside that, they were pushing the tale of Saddam Hussein's connections to the 9-11 assaults. Such a large number of untruths. So much authority obstacle. Presently, be that as it may, the fact of the matter is at last turning out. With the section of enactments stripping the Saudis of their sovereign resistance, over President Obama's veto, the class activity suit against the Saudis is pushing ahead. Equipped with a huge number of pages of archives indicating how Riyadh and its worldwide system of Islamic fanatics have supported, helped, and coordinated al-Qaeda and unified associations in psychological militant assaults against U.S. residents and interests, the groups of those killed, injured, and damaged on September 11, 2001, are going to get their day in court. Also. What will undoubtedly turn out is the complicity of U.S. authorities in the conceal. It looks to me like Robert Mueller's chance in the spotlight is going to get significantly additionally intriguing.